Hello first violins. Oh, I've so enjoyed seeing you on Thursday and um, I got a lot out of the, the whole rehearsal and getting the Argyle together in some small way. So I hope you enjoyed it and I've had some great feedback so thank you for that and uh, hopefully we can do it again next week. Um, little thought, these. This is what the pros use. You put one ear in, this is into your computer, so you can hear me direct into your ear. So when you're playing along, that might be a lot better. Um, to be honest, these came into my mobile phone. So um, you are sure that you have some knocking around. And then just having that directly in, you can still, then the other he ear is hearing me play. And this is tapping me into you. And I think that might work better next time. Um, otherwise, the practice mute idea or playing slightly quieter, maybe while I'm, I'm demonstrating, might help. Um, so see if that works. So today we've got Janacek movement number two and the poor cellos are banished. Um, so it's just you, seconds and violas and it's very sweet and very slow and very beautiful um, and quite high pitched. So we need your very, um, your arms to be lovely and light get that balloon underneath your arms and get your bow being really soft, your fingers cradling that bow. Um, I do have a bit of this exercise. I don't know if anyone does that where you're really extending the fingers and the thumb right out and then pulling right into the hand so you see the thumb is coming right in. This is a lovely, lovely exercise just to get a bit of a wriggle. I've heard it described as an octopus. <laughs> um, so yeah, try your octopuses. And uh, another one is the seesaw, not this, but rolling it over the thumb so you're really feeling that little finger. Anyway, just little exercises for softening that hand, checking your elbows, not, sorry, your shoulder is not up and stiff. And you can just practice maybe doing a little bit of this because we really need some airy light playing. So, as requested, I'll play the first section. So that takes us up to the double bar and I think the movement is so short that I would recommend probably we do all the repeats. So I think yes it's PP but we have that same problem if you play so quietly and don't move your bow we don't really get the resonance of the violin or any projection so you need to sing with your violins and this is where you get your flowing bow so that you're really sort of moving the bow but very breathy across so we get this and really head to the center of the crescendo and then away um, so we get these real bulges again he's really gone for these bulges within the phrases phrases And you notice I've just hooked that, that last note into the bow just for sort of, because it's diminuendoing, we don't want to suddenly go da da da. So I thought it was nice just to really legato that in. And then we can start the crescendo on the triplet um, going up. Um, now it says sol A, so I've suggested after the triplet, go to your fourth finger. And then save your bow a little bit more than I just did there. A really calm and slow. Uh, so keep it quiet, but really go for those bulges and then come away. 
So after the double bar, I'll play to the next double bar for you. One, two. So again, you've got these uh, bulges, and this time they're intensifying a bit more. So uh, after the double bar, I would just maybe a little warmer, a little bit where we're actually P and bulging within P this time, as opposed to bulging within pianissimo. And I think we're just ramping it up a little bit. Then in bar 15, we come right away so that we can really go up to the top. Um, I hope I've given you some decent fingering. Uh, so, for example, bar 15. Rather than going to a fourth finger on the G, if you go to a third, it's, a just, it's not very far for the third finger to come over. Then your three over. Shifter. And then I've gone right up to a third. You don't have to. You could go up to a fourth. I just prefer the vibrato. It's a little nicer then. It's a little bit of a more... Uh, the, this vibrato on the third finger is always better than fourth finger. And then I'm just going to shift back by stages. Uh, here, watch out. It's a whole tone back. And then I hook the bow in here just again for legato. So I think that's all fairly clear otherwise, but really just go for those bulges and, and you can really sing. Again, remember as you go up higher on the E string, don't press down and make, that, make the cheese wire ring. Um, so you're really, by the time we've got, if I go up in bar 15, so I can ring that and lots of vibrato. Um, so if I go from the second time bar, which is now bar 22, three, four, So from the second time bar to the end, we're really ebbing away, of course, and it's sort of just dying away into this sweet, warm sound. And uh, I think still bulge, though. I think I hope I hope it's coming across on the. I hope finally with my wonderful microphone that the dynamics might be coming across. I'll have to check in a moment. Um, so really, but go for the bulges, but it's, it's less and less. And then you have this wonderful, I think it's just the first on their own, I need to check in the score, a bar 26. And I just put this in first position because it's so simplistic and so um, childlike and innocent. So. And just really still um, and very calm. Uh, and then uh, just to help the bowing, I again put two downs just so we're not sort of whizzing through the bow at that point, but we're just really sort of um, measuring it out nicely so it helps you be really legato. Um, and then you can die away pretty well for nothing, I think. So we just let it all hang off into the distance. So it's a very, I found it actually quite hard to firstly to get it bang in time, which is not going to be bang in time. So you really need to understand the full value of each note and really play it 
feel the rhythm and get it bang in time, then we can play with the rhythm and put rubato in. But you need to sort of be able to feel where the pulse is because it is, if you, when you listen to it, with the, if you listen to the clips, um, I've got links, there's an orchestra playing. Um, it's, it moves, it shifts, it's quite hard to tell where the beat is. So I think you need to understand where the beat is for your part. So play it quite straight, maybe with a metronome and um, very slow but just be work on being very calm and i found that the phrasing was actually quite hard and the bow management to get those bulges um and to get the very smooth smooth um thing uh feel of the whole phrase um is quite tricky uh it takes quite a lot of really calm flowing technique and then bar six and seven just watch out for sort of tuning there make sure you really get yourself on the first finger and then it's octave d sharp to e flat I think basically he's enharmonically changing there so it's really effectively the same note uh, so just watch your tuning there um, so I hope that's been helpful and I look forward to seeing you next Thursday for a sectional what I thought we might do is run the first movement maybe a little bit steadier I've had a few requests for the tempo just to be slowed down a little bit which is absolutely fine because we're only rehearsing so we might do that at the first movement and then work a bit on the second movement so Lots of love to you.